Today on In Conversation With, I had the opportunity to sit down with Jenny Gibbons, one of Canadian Space Agency's astronauts. Jenny has an incredibly inspiring story from engineer to professor to being one of our astronauts. Jenny is also slated to be the replacement should Jeremy Hansen not be able to make the mission to the moon. Hi, Jenny. Hello. It's so nice to get the chance to talk to you. You too. It's a pleasure to be here. I wanted to first uh, talk a little bit about International Day of Women and Girls in Science, which is happening next week. We're so excited about that. Could you just talk about what your journey has been like as a, a girl first in science and now a woman in science? Yeah, absolutely. Something worth celebrating, certainly. Yes. So um, the fact that we want a diverse group of people in our science and engineering fields from kids interested in science centers and schools all the way up to people who are solving problems to help people every day through science and engineering. It's incredibly yes. important. So my journey started just like that. I was a kid who was interested in science and I also really loved being creative. Um, I loved being outside and I just, I just, I, I had this love for exploration and, and uh, again, just creativity and those things merged together. That's really science and solving yes. problems and that's engineering. So I grew up to be an engineer and that eventually led me to Canada's amazing space program. And I became an astronaut after applying in 2016 and joined the Corps 2017. So there are lots of different paths out there, whether it's, uh, again, science and engineering or something different. Maybe someone wants to be an astronaut one day and we just want to encourage all of those activities. I love that. And so can you talk about, so you mentioned, you know, as a child being like curious, I love that you talk about being outside. Mm -hmm. um, you obviously had a love of science. You went into engineering. So how do you go, what did you study in engineering and how did you go from engineering to the space program? Like how did that connection happen? It's a great question. Yes. So engineering, I always sell again as that using science to solve problems creatively, creatively, usually yes. to help people. So I became an engineer because I wanted to study airplanes and I uh, ended up specializing in combustion. But really that doesn't, didn't have a lot to do with space. It's tangentially related. We yeah. need engines to get ourselves out of Earth's gravitational field and wherever we're going or into orbit at least. So um, I definitely was interested in solving problems, but in a very generic and broad way. I mean, engineering is so versatile. So I, I guess I just want people to realize that if they go into engineering, they can do so many different things with it. Mm -hmm. And for me, one of those things was becoming an astronaut. So I was always very excited and proud and happy that Canada had an opportunity to become astronauts. We've had an astronaut for, yes. for 40, 40, 40 years now. Um, so I was working as an engineer. I was a professor actually in an engineering department teaching new engineers about thermodynamics and combustion. And uh, the Canadian Space Agency announced they were interested and anyone with a STEM background could apply to be part of it. And I just wanted to be involved. That is incredible. So you applied... You applied and then you were chosen and then you went into the astronaut training program mm -hmm. um, and that was two years, right? That's right? What was that like, the training? Like, how do you go from being an engineer and a professor at Cambridge mm -hmm. to training to become an engineer? What? Just tell me a few things that you did in that training. Oh, my goodness. Okay. So the application process itself, that was very involved. rigorous. That yes. was like a year long where they test you on everything. They test you on problem solving, on how you work as a team, on... You do a bunch of medical tests. You test how you can use the robotic arm. Um, they really just want to like stress you out, see how you solve problems in, yes. in teams or, or alone. But it was very intensive. So I learned a lot about myself in that process. And I think early on, I, I kind of discounted myself a little bit. I yeah. thought, um, I've made so many mistakes. Oh, my goodness. It's just not going to go any further. But um, they kept inviting me back. So it was a good lesson to me I to really that. Yeah, back yes. yourself. Don't say no to yes. yourself. Really apply for these things because you might not have the big picture of what someone is looking for. So that was the start of that process for me. And then once I was selected to become an astronaut, um, my colleague and I, so Josh Kutrick yes. and I, moved to Houston, Texas. And that two years was you learn every system on the International Space Station. You learn how to fly and train in very fast jets for crew coordination. You learn the Russian language for international partnership. Um, you learn how to operate the robotic arm that Canada contributed to the space station. And you learn how to do a spacewalk. So you really have these amazing <laughs> people teaching you yeah. all of this along the way. And it's just a very long process, step yes. by step, learning every day, everything that you can and backing yourself. And then you became an astronaut, full fledged mm -hmm. with the Canadian Space Agency. Mm -hmm. And we're so proud as you know Canadians to have you and your colleagues representing us. Um, 
And then the huge honor that happened, you know, in the just at the end of last year, where you were named the the backup. Uh, should anything happen that you know to Jeremy and he's not able mm-hmm. to go to the moon, what does that? What does the Artemis II mission mean to you, just broadly? And what does it mean to be named as as the backup? Oh, cool. it's an amazing mission, so an amazing, amazing set of missions. So first of all, talking about how Canada is involved in this, we are the only international partner. Yes along like with the US on the Artemis II mission. And that's important for many reasons. It's important because it, it allows Canada to be involved in the development of this new, amazing return to the moon program. Um, but it's also because Canada made very bold, visionary decisions years and years ago that committed us to being involved at the, at the international level in, in, in space collaboration and the space industry. So it's really special to be a part of that and to be involved with the ground team who have been dreaming about going back to the moon their whole lives. People care about this mission so much and we are just laying the foundation for the future and how much we're going to learn when we go back to yes, the moon. Yes, exactly. So from that aspect, I'm just incredibly proud and I feel very fortunate to be involved and I'm wanting to bring all of that knowledge and and all that inspiration that I can back to Canada to share it with people who also right. care so much about space. That's right. um, and then on, on the day to day, I mean, I'm so proud to see Jeremy in that yes. role. I'm fully expecting him to go on this mission, but should anything happen where he could not go, I would fill in that role. Um, I do all the training alongside him. That's I become amazing. fully qualified to fly and also again, work on the, with the ground team on developing what the procedures and the logistics and the training is gonna look like for this mission and the future Artemis missions, including the ones that we land on the moon. It's incredible. Um, I just want to end, I want to talk to you about, um, because you and I have had a chance to talk about this before, and um, I love that you uh, were really active, uh, both in your, you know, in, in your child and your teen years and into university in sports. Mm-hmm. Can you talk about that? It's such a big topic in Canada as well right now, of women in sport and how we invest in that. Um, I think that is such a, a gateway into science and technology for girls. Can you talk about your experience? Absolutely. Yes. I love that you asked me about that because yeah. I get a chance to talk about rugby. Yes. So rugby is my favorite sport. It's a sport that I played when I moved to the UK. And uh, I love it for a lot of reasons. I love it because I love the nature of the sport. It brings like an incredible challenge to my life. And I've always really loved playing it. But the people that I met on my rugby team I, are just phenomenal. Like it is a place where you can truly be yourself and you can achieve excellent things in a team. So it has a lot of parallels with the things I crave and love about my job now. But I have to tell you about the people that I met, like this rugby team that I was playing on. We have people now in uh, who are professors. We have high level like government positions. We have engineers. We have scientists. We have people who are doing PhDs. Like there's just such a wonderful overlap between um stem and the achievement that these people Amazing. people people had in their professional careers and continue to have and the achievement that they had on the rugby pitch um women's sport is just something that is close to my heart and it's something i always want to encourage and it's a huge opportunity for people to both play it and like watch it and get into it and enjoy it there is so much progress to be made there and i That's love right. when people are involved in it That's great thank you so much for taking the time to chat my pleasure thank you I hope you enjoyed the conversation with Jenny as much as I did. Please follow along for more conversations with inspiring Canadian leaders.